Okay, it is now 10.05, so let us begin. Um, again, welcome everyone. We are really pleased to have you with us on this lovely Saturday morning. And as we eagerly anticipate our special meeting of the MNYS Assembly next Friday, my name is Roberto Lara Aranda. I'm the assistant to the Bishop for Communications and Development here in Metro New York. See not, uh, I am also, in case it's helpful to know, the Officer for Communications and Media of the Latino Ministries Association of the ELCA. I'll be guiding you today um, in uh, to helping you navigate digital resources for our first digital special meeting. Uh, this digital format should, of course, be familiar to some of us who attended last year's regular meeting of our Synod Assembly. However, since this type of uh, special meeting is new for um, all of us, actually, uh, the objective of, of our webinar today is to help familiarize you with the various elements of the digital meeting in order to best optimize your experience and make you feel more comfortable. That is our main goal today. I will begin our time together with sharing the agenda. First, we will go over what is a special meeting. Next, we will take a look at the special meeting resources on our mnys.org website. After that, we will familiarize ourselves with the voting procedures and Zoom platform before taking some time to practice using its different features. Lastly, we will conclude our time today with a, a brief Q&A session to help with any lingering questions you may have. Questions may be also alternatively be posted in the chat throughout this webinar. Caitlin uh, Kowalik and Maria Rodas, my colleagues here at the Office of the Bishop will be answering questions as we move along with the presentation. Thank you both. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Caitlin, for being with me this morning uh, in your day off. So if you want to send a question uh, to the chat, please make sure to look for MNYS Maria Rodas or MNYS Caitlin Kowalek, and they will be helping answer your questions. So what is a special meeting of the assembly? As per Secretary Shufflin's memo announcing this special meeting, According to our constitution, a regular meeting of the Synod Assembly shall be held at least triennially. Due to financial concerns regarding the impact of the COVID-19 crisis, Synodical leadership has made the decision to hold a regular meeting of the Synod Assembly every other year. Last year, we had one of those regular meetings. This was also reflected in the budget approved by the assembly last year during, again, a regular meeting. As I stated in our constitution, a special meeting like this year's meeting of the assembly may be called by the bishop with the consent of the synod council and shall be called by the bishop at the request of two thirds of the members of the synod council. On January 18, 2022, the Synod Council by more than two thirds voted to call a special meeting of the Synod Assembly to be held digitally on May 6, 2022. The agenda for a special meeting of the Synod Assembly has to be a specific in purpose and reflect approved items for consideration and action by the Assembly. In short, we will be holding a synod assembly at least every other year. However, due to the present nature of our elections, primarily the open seats for our synod council officers, um, the bishop has convened this special meeting in order to fill these positions. So elections will be the primary business of this meeting, hence the special nature promises, a condensed agenda in comparison to regular meetings of the assembly. But we will have reports from our bishop, a report, the final report of our vice president, Renee Wickland, and a, a report from our church wide representative. With all that being said, let's go over our resources for this meeting. Using your preferred internet browser, type in our website, mnys.org. And for your convenience, the first image you should see will be for our special meeting of the assembly. 
upon clicking on the resources page button, you will be taken to our special meeting of the MNYS Assembly Resources page. Here you can find all the necessary links and materials needed for this meeting. The first links we have here are the welcome letter from our bishop in both English and E and Espanol, as well as a brief biography for our ELCA church-wide representative, the Reverend Dr. Ruben Duran. Please feel free to take a look at these materials to introduce yourself to our meeting. We also have the approved agenda for the special meeting. You can see it on your screen now. Please review this page to become aware of the schedule plan for the day. In addition, we also have the links for our list of Synod leadership, including the Office of the Bishop Staff, Synod Council, and the Conference of Deans. The general information link that you see right now will take you back to the main page for this special meeting, which you should already or have already received from our emails announcing the meeting, which includes links such as the secretary's memo. Lastly, if you need a Spanish translation for the meeting, please click the link here to let one of our team members know ahead of time via email. Si llegara a necesitar traducción en español para esta reunión especial de la asamblea, por favor haga clic en el link uh, de su pantalla para poderle dar aviso a uno de nuestros miembros de staff con anticipación. Now that we cover resources, let's move on to voting and Zoom. Our voting procedures for this special meeting will be the same as last year's 2021 regular meeting of the Synod Assembly. All questions and corresponding selections will be projected on your Zoom screen via PowerPoint presentation, and all answers will be submitted via a Zoom poll which will pop up automatically upon the speaker's go ahead. You will then be asked to make your selection. However, please note that the first option will always be, I am not a voting member. I'm gonna repeat that. The first option will always be, I am not a voting member, which will be used solely by non-voting support staff who are in the Zoom meeting such as myself. Uh, I don't have voting privileges, so I will need to submit I am not a voting member to avoid uh, messing with the numbers and, uh, and to get accurate results. Let us now quickly go over the basic Zoom functions you will need for the special meeting. So here's the basic Zoom screen layout. If you take a look to the top right hand corner of your screen, you should see a small image of a grid with the word view. You may need to wiggle your mouse to see all these options again. If you click on that image, you will be given the option to view in either a speaker or a gallery. Uh, we recommend to select the speaker in order to have the best viewing experience for the meeting. Next, we will be going over the chat feature. If you click on there, a pop-up window will appear giving you the option to type a message. During the special meeting, you will only be given the option to chat with a host or co-host who will be acting as a member of our support team if you have any technical questions. Moving on, we have the reaction button. 
Here is where you will find a number of fun reaction characters or emojis to share from your screen. The most important feature here, however, is the raise hand button, which is what you will need in order to raise any objection to a matter during the meeting. And lastly, we will be going over the Zoom polling feature. Upon request of the speaker, the poll will automatically pop up on your screen and it looks like this. As seen here, the poll will appear with the question or ballot to be voted on with the corresponding selection choices below. Once you click on the selection of your choice, please remember to click submit in order to cast your vote. So let's practice voting. Let me just move my PowerPoint out of the way. Um, we will ask five lighthearted questions and allow 30 seconds for voting. Then we will project the results, which is the same procedure we will follow during the special meeting elections. Okay, without further ado, let us go to question number one. Okay, what is the name of the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? What is the name of the presiding bishop of the ELCA? Option A. I am not a voting member. Remember, we will always have that option. It's only for staff members who need to be in the Zoom meeting. A, I am not a voting member. B, Elizabeth Windsor. C, Elizabeth Eaton. Or D, Elizabeth Olson. Let us vote now. So now you should see a pop-up window on your screen. If you don't see it, don't worry. We will have additional time during the Q&A to figure out potential reasons why you're not getting the pop-up window. 10 more seconds to vote. At this time, we will close the poll and let's project the results. Excellent, we have here the results. And thank you everyone. Most of you are correct. Elizabeth Eaton is the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Excellent, we will have more opportunities to practice. So question number two. Rather than Lutheran, Martin Luther preferred to describe the reformation as A, I am not a voting member, B, heavenly, C, glorious, and D, evangelical. Let us vote now. Okay, I see responses coming in. Hint, it comes from the Greek word meaning good news. Excellent, at this time we'll close the poll and let's project the results. Yes, thank you. And the answer is, oh shoot, I'm giving you the answers, evangelical. Let's move on to question number three. Lutheran teaching can be summed up by three solas. Where are they? A, I am not a voting member. B, Grace alone, faith alone, scripture alone. C, gifts alone, friends alone, song alone. And D, grace together, faith together and scripture together. Let us vote now. You should see the pop-up window right now on your screens and I see answers coming in. Thank you everyone.
15 seconds. Okay, at this time we will close the poll and let us project the results. And the answer, wow, 10 and 10, 50% and 50%. The answer is B, grace alone, faith alone, scripture alone. Okay, question number four. What is the oldest Protestant tradition in the world? Option A, I am not a voting member. Option B, Lutheran. C, Episcopal. Or D, Presbyterian. Please vote now. You have 30 seconds for voting. Just a side note, during the special meeting, you will actually have 45 seconds uh, for voting. But this time, um, because we wanted to practice with five questions, we made it to only 30 seconds. Excellent. Uh, this time we'll close the poll. And let us project the results. And the right answer is correct, B, Lutheran. And final question, when is the anniversary of the ELCA? Option A, I am not a voting member. B, February 28th. 1787, option C, March 29, 1887, and option D, April 30th, 1987. Please vote now. Fifteen more seconds. And at this time, we will close the poll. And let us project the results. And the answer is, in fact, April 30th, 1987. Yes, today marks the 35th anniversary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Today is the 35th anniversary of our church. On this date in 1987, the ELCA cons uh, constituting constitution was adopted during the opening session of the Constituting Convention in Columbus, Ohio. The image on this slide is of the bishops from the three predecessor church bodies, the American Lutheran Church, the Association of Evangelical Lutheran Churches, and the Lutheran Church in America. The three of them are putting water from separate containers into one baptism font as a symbol of the formation of the new denomination, truly, truly allowing us to be church together. Thank you everyone for your participation today. And this concludes our practice webinar. I will be staying on to answer any questions you may have. Feel free to leave the meeting if you feel comfortable with the information we've presented today. And we'll see you at 9.45 a.m. this upcoming Friday, May 6, for our special meeting of the MYS Assembly. Also, I'm assuming some of you were going to be trying again soon, or probably you'll have um, further questions uh, during the week uh, after you start, <coughs> uh, excuse me, analyzing our, our, our resources. If you have any issues or any questions, we have an amazing pastor helping us uh, with those um, requests for information or help. Uh, it's Pastor Paul Johnson. He is our Synod Assembly Coordinator. He is doing an excellent job as usual. Uh, his email address, uh, Caitlin, can you add that to the chat? Uh, but it's mnyes at sa coordinator, Synod Assembly Coordinator at gmail.com. You're gonna see it in the chat. Uh, you can also contact him to this phone number, 
A2. I'm going to re repeat. Uh, this is the phone number for Paul, Pastor Paul Johnson, in case you have further questions during the week. 212-870-2382. Uh, for now, I'm, uh, we're going to take a really quick break just to disconnect some, uh, some stuff here in our office. And I'll see you in three minutes. Feel free. If you have questions, please stay and feel free to stop your video and mute yourself. I'll see you in three minutes. Thank you, everyone who is leaving. Okay, thank you everyone for your patience. Now we're ready for questions. We, I already saw a couple of questions from the chat, so I'm gonna respond to that, to those uh, with everyone here. So the first one was, has access to all of the resources already been made available? Yes, the answer is yes. They were, uh, they have been available constitutionally. We need to publish that. Uh, I believe it's 14 days before the special meeting. They, they um, last week we published those. Um, again, if you go to our website, mnyas.org, the first thing that you're gonna see is a panel that if you click on it, will go directly to, um, to all the resources. So please uh, explore that and let us know if you have any questions, really great question. Uh, the, net, the next one is we're recording this. Yes, we are recording this session and we're going to share it in a targeted email to voting members uh, Monday uh, this week. How long is the special meeting scheduled for? I believe it's around four hours. If you take in mind that we're going to have an opening service and a closing service at the beginning and at the end of the assembly. And I see that Caitlin, thank you, Caitlin, has published the link for the resources. You, so you can also 
save this link. Um, but I also want to share that the email that is going to be shared with um, with all the with the, this video will also include uh, once again uh, links to um, to important information for you to have, including uh, especially the agenda and the voting materials with the information of all the uh, person that per people that have been uh, nominated for the different Senate Council seats, including uh, Vice President and Secretary. Okay, now everyone has the ability to unmute. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please unmute yourself. I, I, I believe Ben, do you have a, a question? No, okay, I, I thought I saw, oh, perfect, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and I see Pastor Johnson is with, with us here. Hello, Pastor, thank you again for helping us. Uh, coordinate these efforts. Okay. Uh, uh, Roberto, yes. just a question for all. Um, there will be a link sent uh, to enter the meeting um, on later this week or Saturday or Friday morning. That's a really, really great question. Thank you for that reminder, Pastor Jensen. Yes, we will send the actual link to the special meeting of the assembly the morning of the uh, special meeting, meaning Friday, May 6th at 8 a.m. You're going to receive an email from our office with the link to access, just as you did today. At 8 a.m., you receive a link to access this meeting. The same process uh, will happen on Friday. We're doing this because we want to avoid people sharing uh, this link because this link is for voting members only. So you will receive it the morning of Friday, uh, May 6th. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Great question. And then other people will be able to watch um, uh, by uh, YouTube or the Facebook page. Uh, correct, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, yeah. Visitors are not allowed into the Zoom space just because we're using the Zoom polling system for voting. Uh, and, and it adds complexities if we allow visitors. Uh, and as, you, as I'm sure you know, complexities also increase um, costs. So trying to be good stewards of this, we decided not to allow visitors to have access to the Zoom space. However, they will be able to watch and follow everything from this special meeting, absolutely everything, including the service, the Zoom services via the Facebook page and the YouTube channel of the Metropolitan New York Synod. And Caitlin, actually, if you don't mind adding the links into the chat in case you want to have them, but those links are also included in our, uh, in our targeted email for voting members, you'll have them. Something else I'm forgetting, Pastor Paul. Clearly, you're really on top of. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, no, I think so. That nothing I can think of at this moment. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, Pastor Paul Johnson is has been really. We're very grateful to have him, uh, and he's available to answer questions. You have the inform his information in the chat. It will be shared in the email as well. And just a quick announcement, the following day after the assembly, we're gonna have two really beautiful in-person services happening at the Marriott Hotel in Melville. It's uh, the setting apart of Synod Deacons that is happening at 10.30 a.m. And we're gonna have uh, or the ordination of two leaders for the Ministry of Word and Sacrament uh, two new pastors are being ordained at 12.30 uh, p.m. on Saturday, May 7th at the Marriott Melville Hotel. So hopefully if you can make it, um, that would be really wonderful. It's uh, sort of the first two in-person services that we're having uh, in our synod. Uh, and it will be really great to be in person together. Okay, well, again, thank you everyone for being here.
If you have questions, please send us an email and we are we will be in touch for sure. You receive many targeted emails. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a beautiful weekend.